Okay, so let's carry on. In the last video, we found the Maclaurin series expansion for the binomial series, just 1 plus x to whatever p power. And we found that that was equal to the infinite series of p choose n times x to the n, where p choose n is given by this binomial coefficient here. Now, in this video, we're going to do a bunch of examples looking at different types of, like, exponent p. So we're first going to start off with a basic example. We're going to look at 1 plus x squared. So p is just equal to 2. Now you may be saying, come on Dave, we can just factor this out and we can get an answer really quickly. And although that is true, I want to do it out in the series first so you can see how this infinite series truncates or ends when p is a positive integer. So if we're to do it out with our Maclaurin series, that means that this is equal to p choose n, which is, we're going to first start off with p choose 0 times x to the 0, plus p choose 1, or 2 choose 1 times x to the first power, plus 2 choose 2 times x squared, plus 2 choose 3 times x cubed, and so on. Now let's do out what all these binomial coefficients are. So 2 choose 0, that's 2 factorial over 0 factorial times 2 minus 0 factorial. Well, 0 factorial, that's just 1. 2 minus 0, that's 2 factorial. So this 2 factorial on top cancel with 2 factorial on the bottom. And we're just left with that 2 choose 0 is just 1. So let's go on and do 2 choose 1, that's just going to be 2 factorial over 1 factorial times 2 minus 1 factorial. 1 factorial is still 1. 2 minus 1 factorial, that's the same as 1 factorial, which is still 1. And 2 factorial is 2 times 1. So we have 2 times 1 divided by 1 times 1, which is just equal to 2. So now let's take a look at 2 choose 2, that's just going to be 2 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 minus 2 factorial. The 2 factorials cancel and 2 minus 2 factorial is just 0 factorial, which is just 1. So this whole thing becomes 1. Now let's take a look at 2 choose 3. So 2 choose 3, that's going to be 2 factorial over 3 factorial times 2 minus 3 factorial, which is going to be 2 factorial over 3 factorial times negative 1 factorial. Now, we had originally defined factorials as like an integer times like the integer before times the integer before it, all the way till we get down to 0. So what happens when we have a negative factorial? Do we keep doing like a we keep subtracting one each time and multi until we get down to zero, but we'll never reach down to zero because we already passed zero. So we typically say that a negative factorial is undefined. But for this, well, for the sake of like what we're doing with combinatorics, it's handy just to think of it as infinity. So in this case, we have a finite number divided by something times infinity. So one over or anything over infinity will eventually go to 0. So 2 choose 3 is going to equal 0. And notice the next term, 2 choose 4, that's also going to be equal to 0. And all the higher order terms, 2, cho 2 choose 5, 2 choose 6, etc., they're all going to be 0. So every term after this x squared is going to be multiplied by 0. So we can say that the series more or less stops at x squared. So now let's just plug in what we know from our factorial terms, we get that this series, 1 plus x squared is equal to 1 times x to the 0, plus 2 times x to the first power, plus 1 times x squared, which is just 1 plus 2x plus x squared. It's a result that we already know, but it's just handy just to show what happens when uh, we have this when p is a positive integer, and how the series terminates. 
Now, with that in mind, uh, let's take a look at another example. Here, let's do uh, an example where p is uh, let's do an example where p is negative. So we're going to look at one over one plus x, and we're going to expand this out in our series or Taylor series notation. But before we do, let's just rewrite this in, in an easier form. One over one plus x. That's just one plus x to the negative one power. Or so we could say p is equal to negative one. So if we write this out in our series notation, we get that this is equal to negative one choose zero times x to the zero power plus negative one choose one times x to the first plus negative one choose two times x squared plus negative one choose three times x cubed and so on. So here we have like a negative choose something. Let's see how that works out. You may be thinking, how is it going to work out considering we figured out that a negative factorial is more or less like undefined or it's infinity. But we'll see an interesting little trick. So let's look at negative one choose zero. That's just negative one factorial over zero factorial times negative one minus zero factorial. Well, zero factorial is one in negative one minus zero is negative one. So we have negative one factorial in the numerator and negative one factorial on the denominator. So they both cancel. So even though they would technically both be infinity, because we were able to cancel the numerator and the denominator, this whole thing turns out to just be one. So that's pretty neat. Let's take a look at negative one choose one. That's going to be negative 1 factorial over 1 factorial times negative 1 minus 1 factorial. So now we have negative 1 factorial over, I'm not going to write the 1 factorial, that's just 1. So now we have negative 1 factorial over negative 2 factorial. So how are we going to do this? Well, we can rewrite this negative 1 factorial as negative 1 times negative 2 factorial in which case the negative 2 factorial on the numerator and the, the denominator will cancel, so we're just left with negative 1. So once again, we're able to avoid an infinite answer by canceling out the numerator and the denominator. And if we do it out again, let's just, for, uh, just to make everything like nice and concrete, let's do out negative 1 choose 2. It's going to be negative 1 factorial over 2 factorial, times negative one minus two factorial, which is just negative one factorial over two factorial times negative three factorial, which is just, we can rewrite negative one factorial as negative one times negative two times negative three factorial over two factorial times negative three factorial. The negative three factorials cancel, Negative one times negative two, that's just two. And two factorial, that's just two. So we have two divided by two, which is just one. So once again, we got another finite uh, value for our coefficient. And if you were to do it all out, we'd find that it alternates between positive one and negative one. So we get that our series is one times x to the zero minus one times x to the first power plus one times x squared, minus one times x cubed. And we can actually rewrite this in a nice series notation as just um, one over one plus x is equal to the sum from n is equal to zero to infinity of negative x to the n. And once again, this will have the same uh, like radius of convergence as our original binomial series had. This is valid for the absolute value of x is less than 1. So here we saw that when p is negative, when p is non-positive, we are going to get an infinite series. But lucky for us, we're able to find that the binomial coefficients actually had finite values because we had a negative factorial on the numerator and we're able to cancel that with a negative factorial on the denominator. So we had a finite binomial coefficient. Now let's just take a look at one last example. 
Just to really pull everything together, let's look at example three, where we're going to expand out the square root of one plus two x. Now, we can rewrite this as one plus two x to the one half power, and we can see that p is equal to one half, which is a non-integer. But notice we have two x instead of x. So there's one little thing we can do. Um, instead of expanding out, like let's just say, in terms of x to the n, if we replace x with 2x, we're going to be expanding out in terms of 2x to the n. So let's just, I'm just going to wrap this up really quickly, or write this out really quickly, I should say. So we can expand this out to be 1 half 2 0 times 2x to the zero power, plus one half choose one times two x to the first power, plus one half choose two times two x to the second power, and I'll just, let's just do another term, one half choose three times two x to the third power, and it'll go on to infinity. Let's just do what these first couple of terms. Now I'm not going to rewrite this entire like uh, factorial fraction, so you should hopefully see the pattern from when we do these factorial terms. If not, you may be able to see it in this example. But one half choose zero. That's just going to be one, and two two x to the zero power is just one. Plus one half choose one. That's going to be one half times 2x to the first power plus 1 half choose 2. That's just going to be 1 half times negative 1 half over 2 factorial. And that's multiplied by, oops, my bad, this square should be on the outside here, my mistake. That's going to be multiplied by 2x all squared. Plus, and then our next term is going to be 1 half choose 3, which is just 1 half times negative 1 half times negative 3 over 2 over 3 factorial times 2x cubed. Now let's try and simplify this up. So we're going to get that this is equal to 1 plus 1 half times 2x, that's just x, plus one half times negative one half, that's uh, negative one fourth, divided by two factorial, that's negative one eighth. And now two x all squared, that's just gonna be four x squared. So if we multiply these two together, we're gonna get negative one half x squared. Now let's take a look at this term. 1 half times negative 1 half times negative 3 over 2 is going to be positive 3 eighths. So positive 3 eighths. Divided by 3 factorial, so that's divided by 6. And then 2x cubed, sorry, 2x all cubed, that's going to be 8x cubed. So this 8 will cancel with this 8. This 3 over 6 is just 1 half. So we're left with positive 1 half x cubed and it's going to go on for an infinite series. And in this particular case, there's no need to a simple series like notation. But let's take a look at the convergence. Typically, the convergence was the square root, sorry, the absolute value of x has to be less than 1. But when we expanded this out, we did it in terms of 2x, which means that this will only, like, this expansion will only be valid when the absolute value of 2x is less than 1. Or another way of saying that is that x has to be between negative 1 half and positive 1 half. So there we go. In this video, we're able to show that we're able to look at the um, Taylor series expansion for the binomial series, and we found that the series terminates when p is a positive integer, and it goes on to infinity, when p is non, well, when p is negative, or when p is a fraction. And this is actually a fairly handy thing, and it's actually, we'll look at some approximations with this in the next video.